and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Angie and I'm a chemist who loves makeup. And today I'm going to be talking about another Kylie Skin, Kylie Jenner skincare line product. And I'm going to be talking about the Vanilla Milk Toner today. And this is because I think this is the most unnecessary product out of her product line. Some of the other products I could get behind, but I wanted to talk about the ingredients in this with you and let you know why I feel this way. So let us just get into it. So this toner is alcohol free. If you see something that's alcohol free, that means it doesn't have ethyl alcohol, which is also called denatured alcohol. Ethyl alcohol is a type of alcohol in your wine, in your beer, in your vodka, that kind of alcohol. There are a lot of types of alcohols, but that is what they are talking about when it comes to labeling. So the Kylie Skin Vanilla Milk Toner is meant to tone and restore natural hydration and help unclog, purify, and minimize the appearance of pores. So the first ingredient is water followed by glycerin. So we've talked about glycerin a lot on this channel, but again, it is a humectant. A humectant is very, very good at pulling in water from the environment, and this in turn hydrates the skin. I'm not quite sure why on the list of key ingredients they didn't mention this in the vanilla milk toner, but they mentioned it in the walnut scrub because in this case, the toner is going to stay on your skin and therefore the glycerin would have more of a benefit, but they didn't talk about it, I am not sure why. So this will definitely help hydrate the skin. The next ingredient is squalane. So this one is derived from olives. It can also be derived from shark fin, but I'm sure it's more common to use olives now. And this is an oil which is found naturally in the skin. And as we get older, we produce less. So by incorporating squalane into your skincare routine, it is supposed to help lubricate the skin and give it a smooth appearance. So while squalane is something that's beneficial for you, there are also cheaper ways to incorporate this without using a toner. For instance, The Ordinary has a 100% squalane product and you could buy that at Sephora. So if you wanna add a few drops of that into your skincare routine, I think that would be a good idea. In any case, a lot of the hydrating properties of this toner you can find in a moisturizer and that should be sufficient enough and so that's one of the reasons why I think this product isn't a good use of your money because a moisturizer should be doing its job and you shouldn't need the toner for hydration purposes. It's also very interesting to me that she decided to call this a vanilla toner. I can't see anything in the ingredients list that indicates that it is sourced from vanilla so that means it probably lies within the fragrance. And I think this is interesting that she did make this fragrance because in every other product she made fragrance free. So it's interesting for this one that she chose to make it what she calls lightly fragrance. Lightly obviously is very subjective. So to her, maybe it's slightly to somebody else. It could be a very strong vanilla smell. I'm unsure if they thought it was necessary or if she just wanted it to smell like vanilla because from looking at the top four ingredients, none of them according to specifications from different suppliers have an odor to them. Sometimes they could say they're odorless and there's like a faint odor, but it doesn't seem within the top level ingredients that there's any negative smell they're trying to offset. Maybe one of the ingredients lower down does have a smell that needs to be offset, but I just think it's really interesting that she chose to make this one fragrance when all of her other products are fragrance free so therefore she couldn't even call the whole line fragrance free and it just makes it confusing to see what she values in skincare products and then there are two other ingredients that fall above the one percent mark from what i can see and that is dicapryl ether and neopental glycol diethylhexanoate so both of these are in there to help the spreadability of this product and as well as act as an emollient. An emollient is something that helps soften the skin, which means it's gonna improve the feel of the skin and this also could apply in hair products as well. What I mean by these ingredients fall above the 1% line, the ingredient immediately after these is phenoxyethanol, which is almost always 1% or less in any given formula. I talk about it a little bit more in my Kylie Skin Walnut Scrub video, so I will link that up here if you wanna check it out and get more information on that. But that means anything listed below phenoxyethanol in the Kylie Vanilla Milk Toner is going to be 1% or less in this formula. So for instance, the other ingredients she talked about is like key ingredients, the apricot extract, the kiwi oil, and the avocado oil are all less than 1% in this formula, making a maximum total of all of these ingredients at 3% of the total formula. So not a whole lot. So things being at 
such a low level like this in a formula don't necessarily mean they don't have any benefits at this level, but I always look at it with a heavy degree of skepticism if these ingredients actually play a key role or if it's just being put in the formula so they are able to list it as containing these products. So for instance, I went to makingcosmetics.com which is a vendor for raw materials for cosmetics. So on the apricot extract, they recommend in a formula that it's at the 5 to 10% level and for avocado oil it's anywhere from 1 to 100% because this could be used in a variety of formulas. So for both of these, it probably could and should be used at a higher concentration than it is within this formula in order to actually see some skin benefits of this product. But for instance, when we see sodium hyaluronate, which is a form of hyaluronic acid, a lot of times the recommended level is somewhere from 0.1 to 2%. So it makes sense that this would fall underneath the 1% line because you don't want to put too much hyaluronic acid in there because that could actually be too irritating to the skin. So for that reason, I don't really buy skincare products or like makeup if the only drawing factors to me or the fact that it contains like these extracts or oils, especially if I see it at such a low concentration like in this formula. So overall, I just don't think this product is really necessary. I think it's not really going to clean your skin any further. I think if anything, the only cleaning that would come is because you are using a cotton pad to kind of like rub off your face. So just the physical use of a cotton pad I think is going to purify more than the toner itself. And I think in terms of restoring hydration, a moisturizer should be able to do that on its own. You shouldn't really need this extra step in your skincare routine in my opinion. So let me know down in the comments below if you learned something today. And if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to click the subscribe button. And as always, I will leave my product links and some of my resources. So as always, I will leave product links and resources down below. And with that, I will see you in my next video. Bye!